friends let us sharpen our math concepts topic is ratio and proportion you can directly go to that specific timeline from the details mentioned in the description box let's begin simple multiplication multiplication concept is basically one to many let's take an example if one bottle has 2 liters of water how many liters of water will five such bottles have so there is one bottle of 2 liters and we need to find the quantity in five such bottles so what do we do for five bottles we'll have to add 2 liter plus 2 liter plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 five times which will give us 10 liters or what we do is simply multiply the quantity of one bottle with the total number of bottles so quantity is 2 liters multiplied by number which is 5 which gives us 10 liters now the opposite of this is simple division which is the concept of many to one so it is when we know the unit of many and we need to find the unit of one example cost of 6 candies is rupees 30 what will be the cost of one candy so we have 6 candies wherein the total cost is rupees 30 and we need to find the cost of one candy so let's assume if each candy cost is rupees 5 we have to add 5 6 times rupees 5 plus 5 plus 5 6 times which will give us rupees 30 but let's say if we don't want to assume what we do is we simply divide the total cost of candies by total quantity of candies so total cost upon total number so which is rupees 30 by 6 which is rupees 5 correct so this is a concept of division wherein we know many and we need to find the cost of one now there is something called as unitary method which is a mix of both many to one and one to many let's take an example cost of 5 pence is rupees 30 and we need to find the cost of 10 pence now finding the cost of 10 pence would have been very simple if we knew the cost of one pen so we would have directly multiplied the cost of 1 into 10 and we would have got the answer but since we do not know the cost of one pen what we are going to do is we are going to derive it from the cost of five pens so cost of one pen will be cost of all pens upon number of pens which is rupees 30 divided by 5 which is rupees 6 so we have used the concept of division many to one and after finding the cost of one pen we simply multiplied by total number of pens we need to find the cost of 10 pens right so it is rupees 60 so we have used the concept of one to many which is the multiplication concept here or we can simply use cross multiplication so we are saying 5 pens is 30 rupees so 10 pens will be how much and we do cross multiplication like this 30 into 10 divided by 5 so what exactly are we doing in this cross multiplication let's see carefully so we are dividing 30 by 5 which is the same as we did in this step step number 1 to find the cost of 1 and then we are multiplying it by 10 which we did in the step number 2 so 5 ones are 5 5 six are 30 into 10 be 60 which is our answer so this is nothing but a unitary method now let us understand fractions concept original and equivalent fraction let's take an example tisha and tasha decided to eat pizza tisha chose a pizza with four equal parts 1 2 3 4 <laughs> and tasha chose a pizza with six equal parts 1 2 3 4 5 6 so tisha's pizza has total number of parts equal to 4 and tasha's pizza has number of parts equal to 6 now tisha ate two parts of her pizza so basically tisha ate two out of total four parts which is 2 by 4 which is equal to half correct two ones are two two twos are four right and tasha ate three parts of her pizza which is three parts divided by total six parts is equal to 3 by 6 is equal to again half now if you notice here this part 1 and 2 is half of the total pizza and this part 1 2 3 is also half of total pizza but only because their part sizes were different their fraction was different but ultimately they ate the same amount of pizza which is half so we can simply say that both of them have eaten half of the pizza which is the original and standard form of fraction right and again if we convert this original form 
into their equivalent parts. So Tisha ate two parts. So we multiply one into two and again the denominator two into two which will give us two by four which is the equivalent fraction. And similarly Tasha ate three parts. So again for half we'll multiply numerator and denominator by three. So one into three is equal to three and two into three is equal to six. So two upon four and three upon six, these are our equivalent fraction. So two by four is nothing but it is equal to half and three by six is also equal to half. Now coming to ratio. A ratio is comparison of two quantities of same kind of unit to each other. Very important, same kind of unit. So you cannot have a ratio of liters to kilograms. The unit should remain the same. It is the ratio of one quantity to another. Let's take an example. In a fruit basket, there are three apples and five oranges. What is their ratio, right? So there are three apples, five oranges. Total number of fruits is eight. So ratio of apples in the basket will be total number of apples, which is three, divided by total number of all fruits. So total number of fruits is eight. So ratio will be three by eight and ratio of oranges will be five by eight. So again, ratio of apples to oranges can be written as ratio of apples is to oranges which is 3 by 8 is to 5 by 8 or 8 8 gets cancelled and we get the ratio as 3 is to 5. Also if we add these two we'll get the total number of fruits which is 3 plus 5 is equal to 8. So it is simply that out of 8 fruits 3 are apples and 5 are oranges. Now let us understand equivalent ratio with a similar example. So in this scenario, we have the ratio of apples to oranges is 3 to 5. So if there are 3 apples, there are 5 oranges. So total number of fruits, 8, correct? But the total number of oranges is 20. Now as per our ratio, the total number of oranges is only 5. It is not 20. So what do we need to do to get it to 20? Let us try multiplying the number of oranges. Let us try multiplying it by 2. So let's double it. So now the oranges are 10 but again it is not 20. So let us multiply it by 3. Now it is 15. Let us multiply it by 4. Now it is 20. Now notice one thing when we are multiplying oranges we have to multiply the apples too because they always increase with the same constant value. So if we are multiplying oranges by 4, we have to multiply apples also by 4 and the total will also get multiplied by 4, the same constant value. So we need to find the total number of fruits in the basket. So as per our, this example, we have multiplied the total also with 4. Initially it was 8, 8 into 4, 32. And total number of apples in the basket. So initially it was 3. We multiplied it by 4. So now it is 12. So the original ratio of apples and oranges was 3 is to 5. And the equivalent ratio which we got by multiplying the numerator as well as denominator by 4 is 12 by 20. So equivalent ratio is derived by multiplying both the numerator as well as the denominator by 4 which gives us 12 is to 20. Now let us look at simplifying ratios equivalent to original or standard form of ratio. Now ratios can be simplified like fractions by dividing each part by their highest common factor. So example 12 is to 20. Now what is the highest common factor of 12 and 20? It is 4. So we divide both these numbers by 4 numerator as well as denominator and we get the answer as 3 is to 5 which cannot be further divided, right? So 3 is to 5 is the original form of fraction 12 is to 20. Now for three part ratio, all three parts must be divided by the same number. So let's say 6 is to 12 is to 9. Highest common factor will be 3. Let's divide all three numbers by 3. So we'll get 2 is to 4 is to 3, which will be the original form of ratio. Let's take an example. A and B are two numbers in the ratio 4 is to 5. Let's write A and B. 
and let's assume the ratio to be 4x and 5x okay because it's a ratio it's not the actual number so actual number could be a multiplied form of these two numbers right now their sum is 81 now if we add these two ratios which is 4x and 5x we get answer as 9x or if we ignore x we just get the value as 9 of the ratio but it is saying that their sum is 81 it is not 9 it is 81 so basically 9x is equal to 81 so the value of x in this case will be 9 multiplied by 9 which is equal to 81 now since we have multiplied the total of this ratio by 9 to get 81 to find the individual numbers again we'll have to multiply the individual numbers by 9 so 4x multiplied by 9 will be 36 and 5x multiplied by 9 will be equal to 45 because the ratio is always multiplied by the same common factor. If we are solving this by unitary method, we would be using if 9x is equal to 81, what will be the value of 4x? And we do cross multiplication. So 4x into 81 divided by 9x, which will give us 9 fours are 36, which is our first number. And again, 9 into 5 will be 45, which is our second number. Let's take one more example. Now there are three numbers a, b and c. a and b are two numbers in the ratio 2 is to 3 and b and c are in the ratio 4 is to 5. If the sum of three numbers is 210 which is a plus b plus c is equal to 210. Find the value of b. Now if we notice here the value of b is not same in both the ratios. With A it is different and with C it is different. So first we need to bring all these three ratios to a common platform, right? So for that first we will settle the value of B. For this we will find the least common multiple of these two numbers 3 and 4 which is 12. Now if we see the first ratio 2 is to 3. Here we have multiplied 3 by 4 to get the value 12. So we will have to multiply the number 2 also with 4. So we'll get the value of a as 8. Similarly, in the second ratio, we have multiplied 4 by 3 to get 12. So we'll multiply 5 also by 3 to get 15. So the total of these ratios, 8 plus 12 plus 15 will be 35. So ratio total is 35, but the number is given as 210. So let us assume this is 35x. 35 into something which gives us the number 210. So what is that number? So if we multiply 35 by 6 or divide 210 by 35, we'll get answer as 6. So basically the total was multiplied 6 times to get the sum of the three numbers, right? So individual numbers will also have to be multiplied 6 times to find the final number. So in this case, value of B will be 12 multiplied by 6, which is 72. Now what is proportion? Proportion compares the size of a part to the size of the whole. Let's take an example. What proportion of these counters are red? So in a box there are few counters. There are about nine red counters and about three blue counters. So what proportion of the total number of counters is red? That is what we are supposed to find. Now there are many ways to express a proportion like first example 12 out of 16. So there are 12 red counters out of the total counters which is 16 so the proportion would be 12 by 16 and if we reduce it to the original form divided by 4 4 3s are 12 4 4s are 16 so it will be 3 by 4 right which means that in every four counters three unit is of red counter right let's see here in the first row there are four counters out of which three are red. In the second row again, it's the same. In the third row again, it's the same. So for every four units, three units is of red counters. Correct? This is what it means. And similarly, this we can express in the decimal form by dividing three by four, which is 0.75, or in the percentage form, which we multiplied by 100, which will give us 75%. So we are saying that 75% of these counters are red. Another definition of proportion is when two ratios are equivalent, they are said to be in proportion. Example, 1 is to 2 and 5 is to 10 are in proportion. Why? Because 1 
is to 2 is in the original form and if we divide 5 is to 10 by 5 it will also give us 5 1s are 5 5 2s are 10 which will be 1 is to 2 correct so these two numbers are equivalent fractions and we write them as 1 is to 2 then 2 is to signs and then 5 is to 10 now in a proportion the product of the means is always equal to the product of extremes which is these two numbers which is the means 2 and 5. So 2 into 5 is always equal to 10 into 1 which are extremes number. They are in extreme corners right. So these are extremes. So we can also cross multiply these two ratios. So 1 is to 2 and 5 is to 10 if we just cross multiply. So 10 ones are 10 and 5 twos are 10. So it is equal to 10. Now let's take an example. Find the correct value to make the ratios proportional. So 12 is to how much will be equivalent to 30 is to 40. So product of means is equal to product of extremes. So here 40 into 12 will be equal to 30 into let's say x because we don't know the value. So x will be 12 into 40 divided by 30 which will be 16. Now direct proportion. When the ratio of two quantities is constant, the quantities are in direct variation or we write it as A is directly proportional to B or we use this sign of proportion. Let's take an example. One man can make five wooden toys in a day. So if there is one man, he can make five toys. But let's say there are four men. Then the number of toys will be equal to 20. When there are nine men, the number of toys will be 45. Why? Because as the number of men increases, number of toys will also increase. Because every man will be making toys, right? So the quantity of toys will also increase if the number of men increases. So here we say that the number of toys made is directly proportional to the number of men, right? Because one increases, the other is also increased. So in general, when A varies directly as B, we write it as A upon B which is equal to k, a constant number, which is called as constant of proportionality. Meaning, every time the number of men increases, the toys will also increase by a constant number. Okay? So, let's say one man is making five toys, two men will be making ten toys, three will make fifteen. Now, how am I getting it? Because I am multiplying the number of men with a constant number which I got as 5. How, how did I get it? Let's see. So when the numbers are in proportion we write it as T upon M which is equal to K. So toys upon men which will be equal to K or toys will be equal to K multiplied by men. Let's put our values from the above example. So toys is 5 which is equal to what will be the value of k if the number of men is 1? So 1 will be multiplied by 5 to get the value as 5, right? So the value of k will be 5 here. Now, if the value is 20 toys and there are 4 men, basically we just have to divide the number of toys by men. So 20 divided by 4 will again give us value as 5. And similarly, 45 will get by multiplying 9 with 5. So here in all cases the value of constant k is 5. Now what is inverse proportion? If the ratio of one quantity to the reciprocal of the other quantity is constant, the two quantities are in inverse variation and we write it as a is inversely proportional to 1 by b. Let's take an example. One man can complete a job in 24 days. But let's say if the number of men increases, the job will be completed in less number of days because now there will be more men working for the same job. Correct? So if there are two men, the same job which earlier took 24 days can now be completed in 12 days. And if there are six men, it can be completed more faster because now it will be completed in four days. Now, how did I get this values? So, the number of days to complete the job is inversely proportional to the number of men. Okay, so D is inversely proportional to 1 by M. Correct? D is days and M is men. So, in general, when a value is inversely proportional, we write it as A is inversely proportional to 1 by B or A is inversely proportional to K by B. Simplifying this, we get A into B is equal to K. So, in above case, we'll 
get this by multiplying m into d which will give us the value of k constant so 1 into 24 is equal to 24 so our value of k is 24 now let's validate this if we multiply 2 into 12 it will also give us 24 if we have multiplied 6 into 4 it will also give us 24 hence in all cases the value of constant k is 24 now in many cases you will have to first find the value of constant k to find the other missing values from the table when you will be solving practical problems. I hope that you are now clear with basic concepts of ratio and proportion. If you like our video, please subscribe to our channel and do visit our website for more information. Keep learning to keep winning. Thank you.